Hi, I'm Bea. My channel is about mixed media, art, journaling, assemblage and anything else that sparks my interest. Welcome to another collaboration with the Creative Art Collaborations Group. It is a color hop where we talk about how we choose and mix colors, make it harmonious or add contrast and more. It took some time to finish the painting so I did speed it up and I will step in with voiceover to explain the steps. I have several ways to start the painting. This time I did start with the 4B pencil and then used the stump to spread the graphite as a start for shadows. Most of the time I have my light source on the left side, so I add more shadows on the opposite side. Next I go in with the Prismacolor pencils in different colors. First with some cool tones and then with some warm tones. The skin isn't just one plain color and also my face aren't realistic at all. I still want them somewhat believable. I used a limited palette this time which is primary cyan, a primary magenta, a primary yellow, Mars black and Titan white. The only extra is the neon or fluorescent pink which I like for cheeks. A little tip here, neon colors on their own are never light fast. But if you mix them with other paint, they become light fast too. To vary my paint further, I started with some gesso and a stencil and later I used some grey napkins with some liquid matte medium. Using the matte medium is personal preference, you could use a gloss instead. And for the napkin, I'm mostly interested in the script part. I add just a tiny bit of medium underneath the napkin and then go on top of the napkin with more medium. Napkins are thin so that works well. Another tip here, make sure that you don't glue your napkins over the tape, otherwise you're gonna have problems when you want to remove the tape. It might rip the napkin while removing the tape. And now on how to choose the colors. Well, first of all, I like bright colors and jewel tone colors. Guess that can be seen in my artwork. But also the season has of course some impact. While I was filming it was really hot outside. So I went for a cool blue-green background. As for the accent colors, I usually go for some split complementary colors. If you are newer to the color theory, there are those color charts out there. Mine is at least 30 years old, based on the Eaton color. But again, that is personal preference. As I'm working with the limited color palette, I have to mix my own blue-green with some blue and yellow. I also make some variations with white and black mixed in. So I have an interesting background with a variegated blue-green color. As I said before, my light source is coming from the left side, so I make also in the background sure that I have the lighter colors on the left side and on the right side where there is shadow from the girl, it is the darker blue-green. for the first layer of skin tone. A mixture half-half of flesh tone, acrylic paint and glazing medium. 
I paint everything except the eyes. Unfortunately, I did hit one of the eyes, so I have to fix that later. There's nothing you can't fix with acrylic paint, so no worries. While the paint is still wet, I go in with the neon color. I usually just use my finger and dab some paint on the cheeks. As you can see, I also add some of the same paint to the background. This helps to tie the whole painting together. Time to fix my mishap to the eye. I use the same titan that I use for the highlights on the bridge of the nose, on the dip above the lips, sometimes I add at the chin and other places. I don't have always everywhere some white. I vary the placement from painting to painting. Now that I have added the white highlights with acrylic paint, I go in again with colored pencils. As usual, I have several layers with acrylic paints, colored pencils and more. For the eye and the lips I use the Tombow or Koi marker which are water based. For me they work equal, they just have different colors and hues. I dilute them with the water tank brush as they are usually very well pigmented. For the pupils I use a black permanent marker or a black acrylic marker. For the highlights either again a white acrylic marker or sometimes the Uniball Signo Pen White. Time to add some complementary colors. For her top some red, but again I make sure that I have variations so it doesn't look too flat. Now for her hair I did mix some orange and I also gonna mix in some glazing medium and then I use a rather light application with some white spot in between. I don't want a flat color. Ok, 
again I make some variation of this orange and add some darker parts and some lighter parts. Time to outline and redefine the lines again. I especially like to use the Prismacolor Black Cherry. It is a dark color but not black. For her earrings and her necklace I use some yellow with just a hint of orange to start with and then I add more orange as shading. I hope you enjoyed watching me how I use colors. As you can see, I work a lot with complementary colors just to give a little bit of distinction between background and foreground, but that's not the only way. There are many different ways how you can do your artwork. The best advice I can give you, just try out different styles, see what other artists do and figure out for yourself what is your way, what you like the best. Now it is time to remove the tape and this time it goes really easy. Sometimes when it's sticking a little bit just use a heat tool and you are good to go. So I haven't taped it there really nice so I have some color bleeding but oh well. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you soon again. Take care, bye!